let's talk about some of the behavioral differences between a tibble and a data dot frame. First of all, tibbles don't convert input types. This is actually more of a historical thing now, but one of the default behaviors in R for many, many years was that when you read a data set into R using the read.table function or a similar function, automatically the function would convert strings, character strings, so words, to factors. And some people absolutely hated this. So for some people it worked well, some people it didn't work well, but the issue was that it automatically changed a certain input type to a different in input type. Tibbles don't convert input types. When you include a variable of a certain type with a tibble, it's never going to change type. Another difference between a tibble and a data dot frame is that tibbles don't allow for partial matching of variable names. You may have noticed that when using a data dot frame, you can give a part of a variable name, and as long as it uniquely matches one of the variables in your data dot frame, then R knows which variable to access. Tibbles require you to specify the entire variable name in order to extract or subset a variable. Another difference is that tibbles don't add row names to a data frame. By default, when you create a data dot frame in R, it automatically adds row names to each row. By default, it's simply one through the number of rows. Since this doesn't have to be done, tibbles don't do it unless you explicitly ask for this to be done. Another difference between a tibble and a data dot frame is that when you subset or extract part of a tibble, it's always going to produce another tibble. This may not sound surprising, but if you subset a single column of a data dot frame, it can in fact return a vector, which can create edge cases in your code that results in a bug. So I know from personal experience that there have been many times when I have went to access part of a data frame and the result was no longer a data frame, which caused a bug in my later code. So tibbles automatically prevent this type of error from occurring. One area where tibbles are less restrictive than data dot frames is that tibbles allow for non-valid R variable names. So essentially what this means is that you can have spaces or other characters in a tibble variable name that you can't use with data dot frame. If you use a non-valid R variable name, you have to surround that by back ticks. I personally wouldn't recommend this because it's going to make your code less generalizable, but I suppose it could have its place in certain types of analyses. Another way that tibbles and data dot frames differ is that all variables used to create a tibble or when you're adding a column to a tibble must have exactly the same length. So when creating a data dot frame or adding a column to a data dot frame, not all of the variables have to have the same length. So by default, R attempts to recycle some of the variables so that everything matches up and has the same length. And that's fine as long as you meant to do this. The problem is that it's very easy to do this unintentionally and erroneously. So tibbles require all variables in your tibble to have exactly the same length in order to make sure that you're getting exactly the behavior that you want. Another difference between tibbles and data dot frames is their printing capabilities or their printing behaviors. And this is perhaps an underrated part of using tibbles in comparison with a data dot frame. So one aspect of this is that you can directly specify the number of rows you want to print for a tibble in the default print statement. However, you cannot do the same thing for a data dot frame. Another nice thing is that tibbles only print the number of columns that can fit horizontally in the console. So you may have noticed previously that when using a data dot frame, when you try to print it, you get this obscene amount of text that runs off of your screen and for pages and pages and pages of the R console. By default, a tibble only shows a limited number of rows and only shows as many columns as can fit nicely in the console. In order to better observe the differences between a data dot frame and a tibble, I've compiled a sequence of R commands to show some of their differences. Note that the last few lines of the code that we're going to run use the, uses the penguins data frame from the Palmer penguins package. So make sure that that is loaded before trying to run the code in this example. I've actually already copied and pasted this code into R studio. And so we're going to pop over there to actually look at the results. So now that I'm over in our studio, we can see some of the differences between a data dot frame and a tibble in practice. So the first thing I want to do here is I'm going to create a data dot frame using the data dot frame function. And I've created columns called numbers, which is just a set of four numbers and letters, which is the first four letters of the English alphabet. And then you notice that I have specified this argument strings as factors equals true. So I run that and I get this data frame 
The reason this is a big deal is because this tells the data.frame function to convert this column to a set of factors instead of just leaving it as strings. And the default behavior for years and years and years was to set this variable by default equal to true. Since R4.0.0, this has been set to false by default, making a lot of people happy, but this created all kinds of issues for people in the past. If I look at the structure of this data frame using the str function, I can see that I have a column for numbers, which is a set of integers, and a column for letters, which is now a factor with four different levels instead of a character string. As I mentioned previously, you can access a variable in a data dot frame using partial variable matching. So in this case, I'm trying to access the letters column of the, of the data dot frame, but I only provide the first three letters of the variable name. However, as you can see, R has no problem in linking LET uniquely with the letters column, and so it automatically accesses the letters column of my data frame. Notice what happens if I access a single column of my data dot frame. So in this case, I'm only going to access the letters column of my data dot frame. And when I do that, it's actually going to give me a vector instead of returning a data dot frame. And just to confirm that, I've, I've taken the same command and I wrap it in the is.data.frame function, which is going to tell us whether this is in fact a data.frame. And no, it is not, which can create issues if we were expecting R to return a data.frame. I also mentioned that by default, R will attempt to recycle values for a new variable of a data.frame. So in this case, I'm going to create a new variable, a new column of my data.frame called new v, and I'm going to give it the values 1, colon, 2. Notice that this doesn't match the number of rows in my data.frame, which is actually four. So what R is going to do by default is it's going to repeat one, two again to get a, to get a variable of length four and then include that in my data.frame. In this case, the behavior was intentional, so it's not really an issue, but you can imagine a situation where I accidentally included a variable that didn't have the same length as the previous variables, but R by default tried to figure out what was wanted and did not produce the data frame that I expected. Now let's do the same types of things for a tibble. To create a tibble, I can use the tibble function. And so you can see I, I create this tibble essentially the, the exact same way as I created a data dot frame, though there is no strings as factors argument. And actually I forgot to load the tibble package before I started this example. So let's load that right now. So we have access to the capabilities of a tibble. So now I use the tibble function to create my tibble. And if I look at the structure of it, you can see that it is a tibble. It's a four by two tibble. And the numbers variable is still an integer like it was for the data dot frame. But the letters variable is a vector of character strings. So that is a little different than what we had for the data dot frame we saw before. If I try to partially match a variable for a tibble, I'm going to get an error. As we see here, it says we don't, basically it says we don't know what column you're trying to access because it does not match any of the variable names in my tibble. So instead I have to specify the entire variable name, which I do so here, in which case we access the letters variable that we wanted in the first place. If I subset a single column of a tibble, it's going to give me another tibble. We can see that from the print statement here, but if I wanted to double check that, I can wrap the previous command in the is underscore tibble function, which will decide whether it is a tibble or not. And we see that in fact, when I access that single column of my tibble, I do in fact get a tibble back, which is good news. Tibbles do not recycle values in a vector that you're trying to add to your tibble. So if I try to run this command right here, it gives me an error. And so basically what's going on here is that because the number of values in this vector do not match the number of rows in my existing tibble, by default, it's going to produce an error. So if I want to add this variable new v to my tibble, I need to specifically make sure that the number of values in my vector matches the number of rows in my tibble. So now I get a result very similar to the previous data.frame that we were looking at before, as we can see when we print the previous data.frame. As I mentioned before, one of the nice features of tibbles is that you can specify specifically how many rows you want to print for your tibble. So in this case, I want to print only two rows of my tibble. And so it only shows two rows here because I specified n equals two. So if I run the as.data.frame function on penguins, which is actually a tibble, it's going to print the results of a data.frame. And you're gonna see that we get something that's pretty messy. So notice here that I'm getting pages and pages and lines and lines of code 
the columns of my data frame are getting split into different parts of the console. So this is a bit of a mess to read. If I print the penguins data set, which is a tibble, you'll see that it's actually much nicer. So it only shows me the first 10 rows by default in this example, and it only shows me the first five columns because the column after that runs off the allowable space in my console. So the print capabilities of a tibble are much nicer than the print capabilities of a data dot frame.